So let me ask you, are you tired of dating advice all centered around what you must do to get a man to respect you? Let me repeat that. Are you tired of advice of the things you must do to get a man to respect you? Well, today we're going to talk about a man will respect your value when he, he has these five things. So we're going to talk about what men need to be doing. Because oftentimes the conversation is all about how women must show up a certain way to get a man to respect them, to value them, to chase you, to get your ex back. You must be doing all these sorts of things. And what about the men? Are they just sitting around doing nothing? Well, today we're going to talk about what men should be doing, or let me reframe that, what a man... Um, the space a man must be in to actually value you, to respect you as another person. Now, let me be clear about something. There is one thing you de do need to do, okay? There is one thing you need to do to feel valued, respected, cherished, desired, chaste, and that is to love yourself. That's right, love yourself. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean in a narcissistic kind of way, and that doesn't necessarily mean in a self-care kind of way. I wrote a book called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book. But it's important to, self-love is about your self-worth, your self-esteem, your self-confidence, your self-reliance. It's all of those self-words, and it includes self-care. Much like the, uh, what the flight attendant says when you're getting on an airplane, if you're traveling with small children, put the oxygen mask on yourself first. What self-love does is it establishes that you do not give your power away to another human being. That's right. You do not give your power away. And I know women have traditionally been conditioned this way. And there's so much conversation out there that men are the leaders and you must submit. You must submit to a man because men are the testosterone and they're the provider and protectors and they must lead because these men know what they're doing. Well, let me just be clear with everyone. Men are rather clueless when it comes to dating, mating, and relating. And that's in the early stage of dating. And let's just be, let's be real for a moment. Most men have weak emotional maturity and most men have poor relationship skills. Now, why does this happen for men? And we're going to lean into these five things that must happen for men to be able to respect and value. It's because we are swimming in a sea of dysfunctionality. We are swimming in a sea of emotionally wounded people. You know, it's interesting. I was just looking back. Um, I got married in my mid-20s. And I only had one relationship prior to getting married. Excuse me, I got married in my late 20s. Excuse me, I met my, my wife at 27, got married at 29. I only had one relationship prior to that. I had no, and that was at age 19. I had little, little or no experience by the time I got married. And I didn't even know who I was as a person when I got married. In fact, I'll be candid with you. When I got married, I was rather selfish, very myopic, very self-centric. Not, I mean, mostly because I was programmed to go to college, get a job, meet a girl, get married, buy a house, start a family. I followed all that protocol that was taught to me as a boot. I'm, by the way, I'm a tail end baby boomer, right? At, right before Gen X. And that was the programming I had. And because of that programming, I followed it, but I was very unconscious to who I was as a person. More importantly, all of my childhood wounds didn't really begin to surface until I began interacting with another human being that I lived with. See, this is the interesting part of the dating, mating, and relating conversation is most, hum most of the dating conversation doesn't talk about the effects, the emotional effects that we experience as we age. And, and how that can dramatically affect how we operate. And since my audience is midlife, and I say midlife is after baby making years and before retirement, many of us have gone through one divorce, possibly two, possibly three. Many of us have had multiple relationships. I was actually adding up how many relationships I had more than three months after my divorce. And I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven relationships that were three months or greater. Now within, a, I, had, I had two that were over 
uh, one and a half years, but the rest were all these short-term experiences. Why I'm sharing this with you is I don't think we really get to know who we are as people until we've experienced multiple interactions with other human beings. And so when I say a significant percentage are wounded, I'm going to share with you in a moment why it's critically important to recognize these five things when you're dating in the early stage of dating. Because if you miss these things in the early stage of dating, you might find yourself with a man who will not respect you, who will not value you. Now, most likely, if a man doesn't respect you, a man doesn't value you, it's because most likely he doesn't respect or value himself. And while that isn't on the list, okay, that I'm about to share with you, it certainly makes sense, right? If that resonates with you, post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts, okay? All right, so number one, he has to be in a good place in his life. He has to be in a good place. After my divorce, I was a train wreck. I was a mess. I was so deep, you know, I mean, for a variety of different reasons. Not only was I going through a divorce, I found myself um, the, you know, high-end corporate job I had. They, they, um, they, took, they, uh, they took away my department and I found myself practically unemployed and eventually unemployed. And then the market crash of 2008, I was a train wreck, but I was out there dating. I was also going through a contentious divorce. And what was interesting is you women are beautiful human beings. You'll accept a guy in his total dysfunctionality. But if a man isn't in a good place, he can't commit. He can't respect you. He can't value you because he can't value and respect himself. So if he's going through a contentious divorce or God forbid he has a contentious ex, Oh my God, talk about those nightmares. Have you, any of you experienced one of those men who have had a contentious ex? Uh, if you have, post a comment there. I'd like to read what you have to share. Um, so if they're go maybe they have issues going on in their professional life. I was, I was going through this emotional hell because I lost my identity and it took me almost 10 years before I dug my way out of the pit of despair. What's the biblical, um, um, Joseph uh, was in the pit, I think it was Joseph in the pit of despair. I had to crawl my way out of the pit of despair. It took me a, dec a decade. How many of you women will nurture a man in that space? And guess what he does? If he's not in a good place and you're in relationship with him, the minute he's in a good place, he's gonna trade you in because he wants to look like a bright, shiny penny to someone new, most likely. That's not always the case. Some men are noble and chivalrous and will stick by you because you stuck by them. But certainly I want you to recognize that a man will not value and respect you if he's not in a good place. Okay, number two, he is introspective and he's committed to his growth. They're, you know, they're, it's important that they're not only introspective and what introspective means is they look inward and ask themselves, when I'm triggered, what am I, that, okay, why am I triggered? If I'm unhappy, why am I unhappy? It's one thing to examine oneself, one's behavior, one's emotions, one's way of operating in life, but it's also, it, it's worthless if they don't do something to change it. See, we have a lot of human beings that are introspective, but they do no work to actually improve, to grow beyond it. You know, just going to one workshop is not enough. Sadly, if you're with somebody who's not committed to grow, it's going to be problematic the minute there is friction in the relationship. Because let's face it, most humans don't know how to even resolve conflict. There's an interesting book I, I want you to check out. Um, it's by Calvin Robertson. He's on the show, Married at First Sight. He wrote, Marriage Ain't for Punks. And he he talks about conflict resolution. Again, I, I by the way, all the books I recommend is in the Jonathan Recommend books. There's a PDF it'll send you to, all the books I recommend. But if they're not committed to growing your relationship, your relationship will hit a brick wall and it will crumble. Healthy, okay. 
you have to recognize that most, if you're not familiar with my emotional maturity relationship skills chart, this is not a fact, it's merely an opinion. Please excuse the glare. I believe roughly 20% of the population has clinical emotional health issues um, and weak emotional maturity and weak relationship skills. And while I say 20% is healthy, I'm being rather generous. Most everybody is dysfunctional. And let me be clear, I'm in that category of dysfunction too. I'd like to think I'm moving towards the healthy. I hope so. But believe me, I have my own stuff. But the difference is I'm willing to own it. And secondly, I'm willing to work on. In other words, if a partner draws to my attention. So, and, and by the way, a lot of you think you're all in the healthy category. It fascinates me how every human thinks they're the exception, but not the rule. The reason why I call myself out, because folks, I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass. Emotional maturity takes Herculean work. And if a person isn't introspective and committed to growth, it's most likely going to be problematic. Hey, it's 11-11, uh, problematic in the dating environment. Okay, number three, he is intentional in the dating process. Intentional means he clearly knows what he wants. Folks, when people are uncertain, when people have no direction, they aimlessly walk around. I mean, imagine, I mean, like, imagine you're going to walk from New York to Los Angeles, okay? Oh, well, make it easy. You're going to drive, okay? But you have no GPS. You have no Thomas Brother guide. Does everyone remember Thomas Brothers guides? You have no ways, no maps, no nothing. And you're actually, and you can't even see the direction of the sun. You're going to end up in all kinds of places and you might not never, you might never make it to your destination. Well, if you don't clearly know you want to be in a fully committed relationship, this, this man that you're speaking to, if he's like, oh, let's just take it slow. Let's just have some fun. I'm okay with having sex with you, having fun, but I'm just not going to invest anything emotional in this relationship because that's not where I want to go. I just want casual. In fact, I'm not even going to put a label on it. It's really going to be a situation fact. In fact, actually, unbeknownst to you, we are just going to have a friends with benefits relationship, but you don't know about it because I'll disguise it in the form of monogamy. I'll, I'll say I'm monogamous and I'll say I'm an exclusive, but since you have no vows with one another, I can cheat. I can cheat on you whenever I want because a handshake is almost worthless without intentionality. In fact, I took a quote. I want to share with you a quote. It's from Yogi Berra. Does anyone remember Yogi Berra? Not the cartoon, but the baseball player says, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. If you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. I'm here to advocate. If a guy isn't intentional, then how can he genuinely value and respect you? Because if he's acting aimless, he's just driving the car wherever direction, he might actually end up in circles because he doesn't even have the sun to follow. Number four, he's objective, objective. What objective is, is looking at a situation and assessing if it's right for him. In other words, he isn't blindly following lust or limerence. He's not blinding lust blindly following lust or limerence. He's being objective. In other words, it's not about, oh my God, we have the most amazing chemistry. Oh my God, you are like unlike any other woman. I, I mean, I can see us getting married. I can see us going on trips together. Oh my God, you're going to fit into my life perfectly. He's all being driven by the chemical reaction. In fact, I'm going to talk about this tomorrow's video. I'm going to talk about the difference between how a man feels how he feels with you versus how he feels about you. There's a big difference, okay? But an objective person assesses you in the totality, and that's actually treating with you with respect because if he doesn't feel like you'll fit into his life, he's going to end the relationship. And when a man ends the relationship, usually within the first 90 days, um, an honorable man, it's because he doesn't really see you as a, a fit in his life. 
sadly, most men are honorable. So you're getting ghosted and getting, you know, they got what they wanted. They, they had their what's known as post nut clarity, meaning they got to ejaculate inside you. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, I don't like this person anymore. Gee, I wished I, wished I thought of that. Well, they actually don't because all they care about is ejaculation. But that's another converse. That's for another conversation. He's objective. He assesses everything, and he doesn't give in to lust and limerence. And number five, hey, listen, a man can't respect and value you if he isn't into you. <laughs> He's got to be into you. I mean, you know, the bottom line is you have to be into the person. You know, the tricky part: a healthy person approaches being into you from a healthy place. A wounded person is into you from an unhealthy place. What does that look like? Oh, they are, you know, constantly needing validation from you might be an unhealthy place. You pull away and they chase you. That might be another unhealthy place. They're control freaks. God forbid they're narcissists. They're going to love bomb you and trick you into falling in love with them. It might seem like they're into you. They're sociopaths, they're bipolar, they're borderline personality. You know, God forbid you get stuck with one of those types. They have poor relationship history. They still have, they're still blaming their ex. They take no ownership in their life. They're not introspective. They're not committed to growth. They're not intentional. They're not objective. They're not in a good place. Wounded people might appear to be into you. And don't forget, you got to differentiate the folks. You've heard the saying, men are the gas, women are the brakes. They are into you after sex, okay? Because there's the guys who just, you know, have to have that need, physical need met. So it might seem they're into you. Okay, so now afterwards, but are they into you for healthy reasons? Or are they into you because they're really a train wreck? And believe me, I was there. And it usually lasts about 90 days. Um, well, actually, I was a train wreck and I'd give it 90 days um, and I would end it, but I do my best to end it honorably, but I was still a train wreck. And interesting enough, a lot of you women will accept train wrecks, but that's a whole nother conversation. And a train wreck can be into you, but it doesn't mean, again, they have to be in a good place. They have to be introspected and committed to growth. They have to be intentional. They have to be objective. And lastly, he's into you. Better than he's just not that into you. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. Post a comment below. I'd like, I do my best to read them all within the first 24 hours. Um, and as always, if you find value in this, please hit the like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And in the show notes are all different ways you can connect to me. You can schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. You can follow me on Instagram. You can join my group. Uh, you get all the books I recommend in the, in the show notes, okay?